What is going on guys, Waxty here, and today we're going to go over five tips that will make you better at Halo 5. Now these tips aren't necessarily for experts, they're not necessarily for noobs, but they're basic guidelines for any first person shooter game, but especially Halo that you should follow in order to become a better player. Now my first tip for you guys is something that everybody should be doing when they're playing a team based game type in Halo 5. Now this is something that I say everybody should be doing, but a lot of people just neglect it. Especially at lower levels. Onyx and up, it is a little bit better, but it's not its not very noticeable. And that is simply, just stick with your teammates, guys. Especially when you're challenging things. You need to be able to be in a situation where you're always going to have a slight advantage. That doesn't necessarily mean you need to be like running away from one-on-ones. You could probably win your one-on-ones. But if you're running around and you see two people on the other team and you're by yourself, it's probably not the smartest idea to challenge them because eight times out of 10, they're gonna beat you. They're gonna win that gun battle. Especially at the higher levels, people have thumbs, they can shoot things, they're not gonna lose that battle. But if you're wandering off or if you're near your teammates, when they're, the challenge is initiated, you're going to win it or you'll have a better chance at winning it. And that's all you're trying to do. You're just trying to increase the odds of you winning a gun battle. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean you need to be running around holding your teammates hands as you play, but you need to be relatively aware of what they're doing and you need to be relatively close. You don't need to be 10 seconds away so that when your teammate says, I'm getting shot at, someone help, and you can't even turn around and even locate the person that's shooting at your teammate, that's a problem. You need to be able to be close enough that you're either A, in a power position that can help your teammate, or B, you're able to put shots on the person shooting at your teammate. You need to be able to help them. You just need to be near them. Help your teammates, guys. They are there for a reason. If you help them, they will help you back. But that doesn't happen when you run around being a solo player. It just doesn't happen. Now, the second thing that will make you a better Halo 5 player is basically just understanding how all the weapons work. There are three different tiers of weapons in Halo 5, and that is the first tier will be like BRs, DMRs, ARs, SMGs, and these are on a standard 20 second respawn time. So as soon as I pick, as soon as I pick up like an SMG, 20 seconds later, another one's gonna respawn. That's just how they work. And these are really good to know of, especially SMGs and BRs. SMGs, in, especially in prior Halo games, AR or assault rifle weapons, they were frowned upon because they sucked. But in Halo 5, they're actually you need to actually understand when to use them. They're, they're useful. So being able to time that when they come back up and stuff is very beneficial because if you can have the SMG and you're in close corridor range, you're going to win the gun battle. Now, the second type of weapons or the second tier of weapons will be things like shotguns, hydras, and these are weapons that are a little bit different. They respawn literally a second after they either despawn or they are out of ammo and someone picks up a different weapon to replace the out of ammo weapon. So these are very beneficial to be kind of timed as well, especially shotgun, because the maps like um, Empire, these maps are played based around those power weapons. So if you understand how those power weapons work, you can help your teammates out, you can spawn, you can get another one as soon as it's despawned. It's, it's very, very helpful. And then you have the tier three power weapons. And these are the things like the sniper rifles and rockets. And these are the ones that come on the launch pads. And these have the little timers around them. But don't, guys, don't play based solely off those timers. You need to be trying to set up for a power weapon, especially in arena game types, around probably 15 seconds. You need to make sure you're in a higher ground position when you see people challenging. That doesn't necessarily need, you need to sprint towards it as soon as it spawns to grab the sniper. Maybe wait a couple seconds, make sure there's no one else around you that's in a position or on the enemy team to challenge you for that, win that gun battle, and then you pick it up after they went for it. You need to just try to make sure you're thinking about what you're doing. Don't just run in blindly. Always play off your teammates as well, like I said in the previous tip. If you're playing off your teammates and you're coordinating things just right, or you're not coordinating it, you're just kind of seeing what your teammates are doing and you're playing based off their play style, you will win the power weapons. Not only that, you'll know when they spawn, and that helps you a ton in Halo 5. If you can have a power weapon in your hands, or if you can have an AR or a BR, especially the BR, BR is four shots, pistol's five. If you have a BR in your hands because you timed it, it's 20 seconds, you know when it spawns again, you're gonna grab another one off spawn, if you have an advantage. And that's what almost all of these tips are gonna be about. You wanna have a just itty bitty slight advantage over people when you're playing Halo 5, and you can get that by knowing when weapons spawn. Now, my third tip might seem kind of odd to some people because a lot of people will disagree with this, but in Halo 5, you need to be playing aggressive, but you need to be playing aggressive with a purpose. You don't want to be challenging literally everything, but because of the way movement works and the way that you can get around the map so fast in Halo 5 because of thrusters and sprint, if you know you got someone three shots down, they're by themselves in the open and they're hiding behind a corner, 
you probably can challenge them with an AR out and you'll probably win that gun battle. And it's probably a good thing you do that because the longer you wait to kill that person that's one shot, he's calling out to his teammates and he's out by himself. So playing aggressive but with a purpose is very, very smart in Halo 5. Playing aggressive for power weapons, like I mentioned before, is not necessarily a bad thing. If you know you're the only one there and you know it just spawned, it's okay to run in and grab the weapon because you're going to have the power weapon and you could probably perform. If you can hit your shots when you grab the power weapon, you could play aggressive. It's okay to play aggressive. But, like I said, think about what you're doing. If you play aggressive, you need to be aware of what your teammates are doing. You can't be playing aggressive running around by yourself, but you can play aggressive as long as you know your teammates are with you. So if you have a guy that's one shot, you can challenge the person, because if someone else shows up, you're close to your teammates anyway, their teammates will be able to help you with the other person that comes up. You'll get the first kill, and you'll most likely get the second kill, because you could probably put shots in as your teammate's calling out. Or as your teammate, hopefully, if they're wise and they have eyes, will see that you're getting shot at from someone else and challenge the other person. But guys, if you're going to play aggressive in Halo 5, and which is something I highly recommend because of all the armor abilities, play wise, don't rush in after everything. Especially if you know they have grenades or if they have some sort of power weapon, then don't play aggressive at all. Probably play a little bit, you know, passive. But play aggressive in Halo 5. It, I think it rewards you. A lot of higher level free-for-all players like Trunks would say playing aggressive in Halo 5 is not a bad thing. But you need to make sure you're landing your shots. You need to make sure you're positioning yourself in a position that makes sense. And that can only happen if you play aggressive, but with a purpose. Now, the fourth tip kind of goes on the whole playing aggressive thing. Sometimes it's not wise to play aggressive. Sometimes it's wise to play passive, depending on if you're down by five kills. I don't know, it's just changing the tempo of the game is okay sometimes. So I guess the fourth tip would be, it's okay to play differently in certain situations. It's okay to adjust your playing style. Sometimes in Slayer games especially, you'll be down 48, 47 or something. You're down by three kills. It's probably okay for you to slow down the pace of the game. A lot of people, when they play Halo games, especially in Slayer, they usually start off really, really, really fast. There's a lot of aggressive players going on when like Slayer games start. But towards the end, they usually slow down, especially if they are close, because people are adjusting their playing style. Hopefully by the 12 minute mark, or about the 9 minute mark in a 12 minute game of Slayer, most people have learned what the other team is trying to do, where they're probably going to be trying to set up at, or where the hot spots on the map, the hot spots meaning the spots where a lot of challenges happen, a lot of people are dying at, like the little, there was a heat map on it, the little red spot where everybody keeps dying at, which is usually where the power weapons spawn or a power position on the map where it's easy to get shots at. But guys, it's okay to adjust your playing style. You need to be aware of what your team's doing too. If your team is playing slow, you need to play slow. If your team is playing fast and aggressive, you need to play fast and aggressive. You can't be doing the opposite when your team's trying to do something. You can't be playing aggressive when your team's playing slow because you're gonna be the only one running out there playing aggressive and you're gonna get killed and vice versa. You can't be playing slow when your team's playing aggressive because by the time they're pushing into the team's spawn, the enemy's team spawn, you're going to be getting killed by yourself because they're going to spawn literally on top of you because you're playing so passive that you're on the opposite side of the map as your team. So guys, just be aware of the situation that is going on in the game. Be kind of adjusting your playing style as you see what the other team's doing. If they're challenging for every power weapon but your team hasn't challenged for one yet, Maybe you need to make the initiative. You need to be the one that steps up and challenges the four of those power weapons because apparently no one else is doing it. But that, again, that's that's you playing more aggressive, but you're playing more aggressive with a purpose. Now, my final tip for you guys is something that I personally struggle with a lot when I play Halo 5. I especially struggle with it whenever I play Halo 5 solo, and that is raging over one single kill or raging over one play that I either deem as being a pile of BS or something like that, or someone's lagging and I think it's a, it's a bunch of crap. Well, what usually happens when things like that happen or whenever you rage, your mindset shifts dramatically. You're not confident, you're not playing intelligently at that point, you're just you're just upset, you're raging. You're just, oh, okay, well that didn't work, I'm just gonna start running at everything. And that's when you start playing really aggressively, but without a purpose, and that is a big problem. And if you're playing with teammates and you're sitting there raging like, oh my god, guys, I can't hit shit and stuff like that, they're not going to want to hear that. You're just bringing the morale of your team down anyway. So, guys, whenever you're in a situation when you're raging, you need to just take a step back, try to get your head calm, start making call-outs if you're making call-outs with your teammates, still play intelligently, maybe slow down your aggressiveness, maybe slow down your aggressive gameplay, play a little bit more intelligently, take a step back, figure out in your head, and this is something that will come with practice, 
what can I do better next time in that similar engagement that will give me a slight advantage that will have a better outcome. And guys, that's pretty much all the tips for this video. These are There's tons of Halo 5 tips I can come up with for this, but most of them all come around with just experience. Try to learn something every single game you play. Anyway guys, thanks for listening to me, and I will see you guys in the next video. Peace.